Welcome to worship today. We have a special weekend going on at Lyman United Methodist Church because we are celebrating our 190th birthday as a church. Believe it or not, we got our start right down the street in the, um, 1833. Actually, some people started meeting in the fall of 1832 in, in a house nearby, but they moved to a log cabin on Middletown Road and they got officially chartered in 1833. So we are celebrating 190 years. We're almost to our 200th birthday. And today in our in-person worship service, we're going to be doing some special things to celebrate that anniversary. So thank you for joining us online because we are so thankful to be able to say that we have a congregation that's not just limited to this little spot in Lima, but actually we're able to join together and worship with people all over through uh, this power of the internet and through uh, the power of the Holy Spirit joining us together. So thank you so much. Welcome to worship today. We continue to work our way through the New Testament, and we are in the book of 1 Timothy, which was not written by Timothy. It was actually written by Paul to Timothy. And we have uh, verses, chapter 6, verses 11 and 12 as our focus for today. Paul wrote, But um, as for you, people of God, shun all this unholy living. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you have been called and for which you have made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. I pray that this worship service today will indeed help you fight the good fight of faith, that it will help you take hold of that eternal life, and that it will strengthen your ability to witness to the love of God in the world. May you be blessed today. Uh, thank you again for joining us in worship. Hello, I'm Trevor Sala. Please join me in the call to worship. We are all made in the image of God. We are made to be diverse, none of us the same. We are all made in the image of God. We are made to live in harmony with God, creation, and each other. We are all made in the image of God. We are made to be a community that reflects God's inclusive love. No one is excluded from God's love. Let us worship the God who created and loves everyone. Please join me in the opening prayer and Lord's Prayer. O oh God, we gather in your presence to praise your holy name with songs on our lips and love in our hearts. Thank you for your provision through almost 200 years of Lima Church Ministries. Continue to lead us and guide us, O Lord. Inspire and equip us to reach a new generation with your love. Fill us with your Holy Spirit so we might be your faithful witnesses today and always. And now we pray together in Jesus' name. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Later this month, five people from our Lima congregation will be traveling to Rwanda with a group called Zoe Empowers. And Lima's been uh, working with this agency for almost two years now. And we have been sponsoring a group of orphans in the country of Rwanda. It's 27 households. So we've been working with the 27 heads of the households and together with their younger siblings, it's 95 people whose lives have been completely changed by Zoe Empowers and this empowerment model, this idea that with a little support, they will never need charity again. So uh, you'll see on your screen the five missionaries who are traveling from Lima, Sabrina, Penny, Phil, Terry, and Dory, and they'll be uh, leaving later this month. And we would ask for your prayers as they travel and um, help us to um, 
really make sure they're going with all of the prayer support that they need. So we are going to be saying this prayer together. Uh, we recognize you as ambassadors of this congregation in ministry with the people of Rwanda and dedicate you to service in the name of Jesus Christ. Through our prayers, we will be united with you in your work. May God richly bless your labors. Thank you for praying for our mission team, for praying for the children impacted by, um, uh, by poverty and by uh, losing their families, uh, not only in Rwanda, but around the world, and especially for our Lift One Another group. Thank you so much for all of your support. Again, if you don't know me, I'm Trevor Sala. This service, this church, means a lot to me. Currently, I am Lima's church council chair, but starting in the new year, I'm transitioning to a lay leader alongside Sabrina. I'm a member of both the choir and the praise band, which are meaningful both as ways to praise God and uplift the congregation, but also as fun social groups. I've grown up in this church, having been a regular of Lima since before I was a teen. This place, these people are family to me, a big evolving family. I've been involved with many of the church's worthy activities over the years, including Bible studies, Bible schools, Cub Scouts, youth groups, feeding the homeless, construction projects, holiday events, and so on. There's a lot to be a part of. And I'm glad to see many more groups and events going on that I haven't directly been a part of, but I appreciate all the same. Church to me is a way of connecting people to God and to each other. It is hard to love someone you don't know and church helps with this. I am honored to know that I am part of a church that is 190 years old and counting and part of a bigger church that is over 2000 years old and counting. This is also a meaningful service to me because we are celebrating three years of being a reconciling church. For those who don't know, being a reconciling church is one that publicly disagrees with the United Methodist Church's historical and fortunately changing policy to prohibit same-sex weddings in church and the ordination of practicing LGBTQ plus clergy. We believe that we should accept, love, and welcome all of God's children. Even before the pandemic, Pastor Dory and a committee of likewise-minded individuals in the church met together researched and discussed our beliefs on the topics and crafted our reconciling statement. We then shared it with the congregation, took feedback, determined buy-in, and eventually voted to adopt it. Some sadly left our congregation over the matter, but I am proud, proud to say that the majority have approved of or at least come around to the idea. It regularly appears in our bulletin as a welcome to all, but I'm gonna read it now for you. Lima UMC celebrates that all people are created in God's image and are of sacred worth. We are a welcoming community that affirms and values all people without regard to age, race, culture, sexual orientation, gender identity, mental or physical ability, family configuration, faith history, or socioeconomic status. We seek to love all people because God loves all people. As generations before us have done, we humbly continue to explore and live the meaning of Christian discipleship in today's world. I hope you believe in this and in our church as well, and that you continue to join with us in serving and loving God in each other. Thank you and God bless you.
epistle lesson is 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 11 through 16. But as for you, man of God, shun all this. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and for which you were made. The good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In the presence of God, who gives life to all things, and of Jesus Christ, who in his testimony before Pontius Pilate made the good confession, I charge you to keep the commandment without spot or blame until the manifestation of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he will bring about at the right time. He who is the blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, it is he alone who has immortality and dwells in the unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see. To him be honor and eternal dominion. Amen. I've entitled this sermon, Celebrating Our Proud Past and Our Colorful Future. Today, during our in-person worship service, Lima United Methodist Church is celebrating its 190th anniversary. Yup, that's right, only 10 more years to go until Lima has its bicentennial. That means it's been almost 200 years of people meeting on North Middletown Road to pray, worship God, study scripture, support each other, and reach out to their community and beyond with God's love. That's a long time. One of the things we will be doing during our in-person worship service is recognizing the people who have been members of Lima for 40 years or more. In other words, who among our current members was on hand for Lima's 150th anniversary? It's actually a pretty long list, over 40 names. Lima is blessed to have many people who have given decades of wisdom and spiritual maturity to help guide and strengthen the church. We are also blessed to have many new members and something we've never done at any of our anniversary celebrations before is to celebrate the people who participate in worship either by tuning in online or by reading the sermons and liturgy at home. So thank you for being here. We are continually finding new ways to witness to our faith in Jesus. In 1833, when Lima Church was founded, our first members attended worship by walking here, riding a horse, or riding in a horse-drawn carriage. Decades would pass before anyone drove to church. Now, of course, most of our worshipers arrive by car. A handful walk or ride a bike, but I've never seen anybody come here on a horse. And these days, many of our worshipers arrive at worship by turning on their computer or opening their mail. Even though so much has changed, the charge Paul wrote to his protege Timothy almost 2,000 years ago remains as relevant today as ever. Flee from unholy living and instead pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. There's that word gentleness again. I never noticed before this year how often it appears in the New Testament. Paul said to keep working for the good, but of course, never use more force than necessary to get the job done. Stay the course of faith until the day the Lord appears again. Keep witnessing for Christ, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Let your life bring glory to him. These ancient instructions from Paul are good words for every generation. The particulars of worship have changed, how people arrive, what they wear, what kind of music they like, whether the sanctuary is air conditioned or not, air conditioned or not even whether the sanctuary is heated or not. Um, these issues have had lots of different looks over the years. But the who of worship, that has not changed. For almost 200 years, Jesus has been worshipped at Lima, the triune God, 
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit has been the object of our adoration, praise, and service, and that will never change. And the why of worship? That hasn't changed either. We worship God because God is worthy of our worship. We worship God to be reminded of who we really are, God's beloved and gifted children. We worship God to strengthen our spirits for better living so we and the world can be transformed. The how, the when, and the where of worship has seen lots of iterations over the years, but the who and the why are our bedrock. What a joy to celebrate 190 years of that witness today. We are also celebrating that this month marks three years since we took our vote to become a reconciling congregation. Before the pandemic, the leaders of Lima Church embarked on an almost two-year journey of learning, prayer, and discernment. They had a hunch that God was leading Lima to formally, formally articulate what has been true here for many years, that all people, regardless of sexual orientation, are welcome to worship serve and grow at Lima. This may seem like an obvious statement, but our United Methodist denomination has had a lot of division over human sexuality in the last 30 years, ramping up especially, I think, in the last eight to 10 years. Over the course of many months of Bible study, learning from outside speakers, and praying together, Lima's leaders drafted a statement of inclusion that statement was shared with the congregation and a straw vote showed the congregation was 95% in favor of adopting it. Based on that positive response, we scheduled our official vote for March 2020. But we all remember what happened in March of 2020, the pandemic. So Lima put its process of becoming a reconciling congregation on hold for several months. And when it became clear that we wouldn't be getting back to normal anytime soon in terms of meeting for public worship, our Lima leaders decided to conduct the vote by mail. Our statement of inclusion was passed by an overwhelming majority, and we did our best to publicize that. But we didn't have a party because it was hard at that time to plan big gatherings. Well, earlier this year, we decided it's time. So today at Lima, after worship, there will be a luncheon to celebrate not only Lima's 190 years of faithfully following Jesus on North Middletown Road in, in Middletown Township, but also three years of faithfully following Jesus as a reconciling congregation. To help us celebrate all of that, will you join me in a prayer litany? I will say a sentence or two of prayer and then you are invited to respond by praying aloud or silently. We give thanks to you, O oh God. Let's try it together. We give thanks to you, O oh God. Eternal and loving God, today we give you thanks for your goodness through all the years of worship and witness at and through Lima United Methodist Church. For your grace in calling us to be your people for your love revealed to us in Christ your Son, for the gift of your Spirit and the joy of salvation, we give thanks to you, O oh God. For those who established this congregation, for their faith and vision, for their gifts and abilities, we give thanks to you, O oh God. For all who have been members of this congregation, for those who have given freely of their time and money, for those whose wisdom guided our congregation, we give thanks to you, O oh God. For all who have preached and taught here, for all who have confessed here that Jesus is Lord, for all who today lead in worship, witness, and service, we give thanks to you, O oh God. For all who courageously follow you, step by step, forsaking their own comfort, so others might experience the abundant life you offer, we give thanks to you, O oh God, for the assurance that we too are part of the great cloud of witnesses, that our faithful living is forming a legacy for future generations, we give thanks to you, O oh God. 
Amen. Thank you for joining me in that prayer. What a blessing to be part of an affirming, diverse, and vibrant church family. Recently, I attended a clergy workshop where all the participants were told to bring an object that represents why we got into ministry in the first place. I brought in a rainbow, and today this is why I'm wearing my a multicolored stole, because all these colors to me represent inclusion. Growing up, I didn't always feel like I fit in, but at church, there were people who took a special interest in me, people who wanted to get to know me, who wanted me to participate and make a contribution, people who were happy I was there. What a difference that made in my life. I got into ministry hoping to help lead local congregations in their efforts to be as, fir as affirming and welcoming as my local church was. When I started in ministry, I didn't have any thoughts about this in terms of human sexuality. But I'm so thankful my ministry has evolved to include embracing even these kinds of differences too. The how, the when, and the where of worship has changed a lot over the years, but the who we worship, Jesus as our Lord and Savior, that will never change. The triune God who created us, redeems us, and sustains us, this God is love. And love is why we worship God. We worship God so we can express our love for God, and grow in our love for all that God loves. And there is no one ever made that God does not love. Can I get an amen to that? Thank you for joining in worship today. We are celebrating Lima's proud past and her colorful future. I'm so glad you are a part of Lima's present. Blessings for our journey together as we seek meaningful ways to worship serve and fellowship even though we can't always be together in person may god richly bless you amen our affirmation of faith today is the world methodist social affirmation we believe in god creator of the world and of all people and in jesus christ incarnate among us who died and rose again and in the Holy Spirit, present with us to guide, strengthen, and comfort. We believe. God help our unbelief. We rejoice in every sign of God's kingdom, in the upholding of human dignity and community, in every expression of love, justice, and reconciliation, in each act of self-giving on behalf of others in the abundance of God's gifts entrusted to us that all may have enough, in all responsible use of the earth's resources. Glory to be, be to God on high and on earth, peace. We confess our sin, individual and collective, by silence or action, through the violation of human dignity based on race, class, age, sex, nation, or faith, through the exploitation of people because of greed and indifference, through the misuse of power in personal, communal, national, and international life, through the search for security by those military and economic forces that threaten human existence, through the abuse of technology, which endangers the earth and all life upon it. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We commit ourselves individually and as a community to the way of Christ, to take up the cross, to seek abundant life for all humanity, to struggle for peace with justice and freedom, to risk ourselves in faith, hope, and love, praying that God's kingdom may come. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. We have heard scripture read. We have affirmed our faith together. We have celebrated Lima's anniversary, not only their 190th birthday, but three years of being a reconciling congregation. 
hear these words of benediction. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you have been called and for which you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Go in peace and continue to serve your Lord. Amen.